Biobalance HealthCast, episode 270, Men, Who Needs Testosterone Replacement? Biobalance HealthCast features conversations about positive aging. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of Biobalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. One of the most fascinating things that uh, I have learned from working with Dr. Maupin is the difference in the way she approaches the medicine that she practices and most of the doctors that I have known. And so if someone say this about you, and then you can okay. defend yourself one way or the other. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> but uh, Kathy spends a lot of time with her patients. I mean, she, for a new patient interview coming to her office to get an assessment of whether or not they should be there, she spends an hour with them typically. That's what she books. And, mm-hmm. and if she needs more, she takes more. So her her patients have to understand that this is the way that she works. Mm-hmm. And most of them are very happy to find out that that's mm-hmm. the way you work. Uh, and, and part of why she does it is her own passion and belief about the way medicine ought to be. But part of why mm-hmm. she does it is the protocols that she practices for diagnosing the, the loss of hormones and the replacement of those hormones when they are appropriate and or necessary requires information that most doctors don't have. And so today she's going to talk to us and we're going to learn about the the uh, the matrix of decision making, the triage process by which she goes through an interview with a prospective patient to see if they are qualified as a patient Mm -hmm. to receive her treatments and then to diagnose and troubleshoot their specific and individualized symptomology to reach the right payoff for them so that they Mm -hmm. get uh, results that make everybody happy and make them healthy. So, right. so I want you to talk us through that process because mm-hmm. I've had this conversation mm-hmm. with you on and off camera a million times, and I continue mm-hmm. to be fascinated. In, in in some ways, she's like a medical detective uh, in, in searching out symptoms and what those symptoms mean, uh, identifying the symptoms of what we call TDS that can also be symptoms of other things. Mm-hmm. And so you have to go through that triage process to say, what am I looking at? And then you go through the mechanics of lab tests Mm -hmm. and reading the lab values and knowing Mm -hmm. what those mean and incorporating that information into your decision matrix as well, which the high volume uh, sort of discount uh, Mr. T units that are scattered all over the Mm -hmm. the world don't do. Yeah, I mean, basically their philosophy is every man needs testosterone Mm -hmm. and here are some shots and come in every two weeks, get a shot. One size fits all kind of thing. Mm-hmm. They do vary the dose a little bit, but still, basically that that's what I see when they come to my office when they're dissatisfied with their treatment. Well, and then I see what their treatment pellets. plans You've are. You've had so many people come, come in to get pellets that have gotten pellets elsewhere mm-hmm. and say, it doesn't work for me. And right. then when you get into what's going on, what you found is they didn't get a, a, an adequate dosage because most doctors don't know or what they you didn't know. see the other hormones that were affecting right. that testosterone level so they didn't have any um, they didn't have any troubleshooting where the doctor took the hormone that was interfering and shut it down Mm -hmm. or stimulated it to make the testosterone work optimally really the big picture is I'm trying to bring people back into their young healthy bodies by first bringing their testosterone to a young healthy level and the way I, I, even before a patient comes to my office, you know that I, I have people give supply me with their history mm-hmm. and all the symptoms they have. Yeah, all that and, works online. You yeah. fill it out, send it in before you come. Right, and I look at that myself with, in conjunction with your lab. So I have both things sitting on my desk. So I'm looking at how old you are and the other illnesses you have, but your symptoms and your blood work, and so that tells me. Am I going to make be able to make an inroad in the symptoms of this patient? Is testosterone pellet going to be the best answer? Or, and sometimes I decide this, and we're talking about men now, are we just a few years away from needing pellets and maybe there's some other imbalance that's causing the free te- testosterone to be low and maybe I can fix that with just a medication? So... For those patients, I make sure that my staff tells them, you don't need pellets yet, 
But Dr. Moffat would like to have a consult with you and we'll discuss this so. and then treat you because I don't believe they actually need to shut their own system down yet because that's what it does. <coughs> so Testosterone replacement shuts your own system down. Regular viewers of our health cast will already know this, but mm -hmm. if anybody's watching it for the first time, talk about what you mean when you say free testosterone and okay. why that shuts your system down. What, what okay. do you What do you mean when you say okay. that? Okay. So first of all, free testosterone is the active testosterone. That's the, available for use. That is available for use in your body. Okay. When testosterone is secreted, it goes into your bloodstream, and most of it is storage. It is. It has a protein attached to it, and it can't work. Your body doesn't even see it until that protein comes off. So that's bound testosterone. Then you have free testosterone that has is is open for use. It can attach to cells. It can stimulate cells to to activity. So that's a very small percentage of all the testosterone that you have. This is both in men and women. So total T is like a motorcycle with a sidecar. It's flying through the bloodstream and mm -hmm. it has a sidecar of this protein. Mm -hmm. And when it has a sidecar, it can't be used for anything else. Right. And the free testosterone is like the motorcycle without the sidecar going around looking for a place where it can fit. Right. Exactly. And that's and that's the part that's so important. If you're if you're thinking about any anything that is inactive versus active, if you're the doctor, what do you what do you want to know? You want to know what's active because that's what the symptoms relate that's to. That's what you can actually work with. Right. The active is the amount of testosterone that's making the symptoms be there or not be there. The right. lack of them is making the symptoms happen. So when I look at it, my first test that I look at with the history is total testosterone, of course, just to see if they're producing any. That's important. Right. And then free testosterone, which is to see if it's really low and if that's the cause of the symptoms. Which are both maybe low? They could both yeah, be they low. Yeah, they both, both can be low. It could just be one or the other. Right. And, and so in your mind, uh, mathematically, what if, if a man's 50 or older, what are you looking for as an, uh, a functional amount to, to alleviate symptoms for most guys? So... So my so the training that I've had tells me that the numbers on a lab report for testosterone for men is not normal is not normal. In other words, when I say normal, I mean you're functioning and you have no symptoms from low testosterone, okay? Mm -hmm. So that means that 400 is uh, I always have to remember my um, my numerator and denominator is um, nanograms per deciliter. So 400, that's standard. So 400 is the magic number for total. But 129 is what I was trained by Dr. Chatera is necessary for men to have la no symptoms from loss of testosterone and to be fully testosteronized. But that's picograms per milliliter. And that is, that is that's, even a smaller, that. it's picograms per right. Uh, milliliter. You're right. Yeah. So it's a different numerator denominator. So, so the total, which is not nearly as a, I guess correlatory isn't a word, but it doesn't correlate with the symptoms. Your symptoms uh, is important just to know you're making testosterone. But, but really the magic number is 129 on free testosterone, and that's what men should have to be totally functional and be young, healthy. And have all of the characteristics of testosterone, good sex life, no ED, that kind of thing. So you're doing whatever you need to do to pump up that number to 129 or above or just to get it to 129? 129 or above. Okay. And so the dosage for testosterone that you give will pump it all up, total and yeah. free? Yeah. So, so if you have... Let's go through the options. If somebody, if all I'm looking at is testosterone, okay, mm -hmm. which is not what I do because I look at everything, but my mind computes it, so it's really hard to describe. But initially, I look at, let's do a couple groups. There's total testosterone that is low and free testosterone that's low. Well, that guy, that gentleman needs to have testosterone added. He's going right. to have to have it replaced. Right. And that's so, where when you say your right. shuts down. So to replace 
that's why it's a very important uh, factor as to whether your testosterone is low before you have it replaced. Mm -hmm. You don't want to give somebody with a great testosterone level more testosterone because that shuts their own production down. Everybody thinks it's like you have a glass and you have it half full and you add more milk or, you know, milk, glass of milk and right. then it's up to the top. That's not how this works. Right. How this works is whenever you give a hormone to anyone, it feeds back to their brain and says, oops, have enough, shut down production. So it stops your own production from the testicles. So that would happen with estrogen and ovaries. It happens with testosterone. Is that irreversible? If, if you were to give me pellets for six months and it stopped my production of testosterone, whatever amount there was, obviously less than I needed because you wouldn't give me pellets otherwise. And then I went off of pellets for whatever reason. Would my system start to make testosterone yes. again? Yes. But it would still make it at whatever level it at was whatever low it level it was making it before. It's not going to so make I'll it. So I lose the gain of symptom relief. Right. But okay, you'll go back to no normal. Yeah. When that, which is why normal is so frustrating. When that doesn't happen, is when you have young men who have a plenty of testosterone and are trying to pump it up so that they can do lifting or whatever, and they do it over and over again. Mm -hmm. So they are suppressing their own testosterone over and over again. Now, see, they 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 should come back to a normal high level like they had before. Right. But if they do this enough times and they know how to rescue themselves, they use, I won't even go through that because I don't want to educate anybody on that. Right. But they know how to rescue themselves from the suppression sometimes it doesn't work mm -hmm. because they're used to having a high level. So they rescue and they're, they're down here. They're yeah. still making a little, but it's right. not enough. So then they end up with testosterone replacement the rest of their lives. Do you know why they have high squeaky voices when they're steroid <laughs> freaks? I don't know why they have high squeaky voices. <laughs> I didn't even notice that. In any case, no neck, um, high squeaky voice. I don't treat those guys, so I don't know. <laughs> so in any case, when you already have a low level, you don't have a lot to lose. So we're suppressing that small amount and replacing it. So it wasn't adequate anyway. Mm -hmm. So it's a different situation. So if you have somebody with low, low, you're going to have to replace that testosterone. But one of the reasons that I, I think it's important that we discuss this, you know, people go to other physicians for other reasons, and they do blood mm -hmm. tests. And they get a lab result back that says instead of 400, the total testosterone is 1,200 or 1,500. And they go, they freak out and they say to the oh, yeah. patient, oh my God, she's going to kill you. Because uh, they don't know <laughs> Which, exactly But they don't what know exactly do. how they're going to kill you. I don't know how she's going to do it, but she's going to do it. Yeah. But in any case, it doesn't matter what your total well, you've is. You've had doctors call you. I know. And say, what are you doing to my patient? <laughs> But say, they're looking. <laughs> they're looking at the total testosterone, right. and it really doesn't matter what the total testosterone is. Yeah, because it's just circling the system. Till, yeah, it's uh, not doing anything. It's the free testosterone. So I'm trying. It, it may be necessary in some people to push their total testosterone past normal just to get their free testosterone up to normal. And that depends on many things, many other hormones in their body that we don't have a lot of control over mm -hmm. and liver, liver proteins that bind it up. So in any case, yeah, I get, I get those calls. And then I have to go through this whole process of explaining to them, who are right. doctors and don't like to be explained to, that the only thing that really matters is free testosterone. And it's normal. But it's not the same normal as on the lab sheet because they tolerate very low levels right. as normal. But that does not that does not mean healthy. I guess it means average for your age. That's lab normal, uh, an average for an age, for an age mm -hmm. cohort. That's not right. functional normal. Right. And and when we look at it, we, I always compare this to bone, how we judge bones and osteoporosis. Mm -hmm. When we look at bones, bones decrease in in uh, thickness as we age. So to decide whether bones are normal, you have to compare them to 29-year-old females or 29-year-old males. So that's what we should be doing with hormones on our lab reports, but we don't. They compare us to other people our own age who have not enough hormone. So they say, oh, you're normal. That doesn't mean normal. It means you're average for your age. Everybody else feels lousy, so do you. I so that you, doesn't mean you're healthy. I love when you tell this story because my wife, who's a seven, uh, <laughs> was seeing her gynecologist, and he told her after she had a bone density exam 
that mm -hmm. she was on that exact boundary between osteoporosis and osteopenia, and that her bones were getting brittle, brittle and fragile. And as she got older, she'd have breakage issues. How many years issues. ago? About 10. Mm -hmm. uh, and so she came to see you about five years ago and started getting pellet treatments. Mm -hmm. And she told her doctor, and, and her doctor had her on Fosmax, which has a lot of side effects, and mm -hmm. she wasn't happy about it. So in consultation with you, she went off the Fosmax, told her doctor. He was like, mm, well, we'll see. Uh, because he didn't want to be critical, but he didn't believe. Well, he knows me. And so then you had her take a bone density test last year, and she took the results back to her doctor. She's no longer on the borderline between osteopenia and osteoporosis at all. Her bone density is normal. And That's not she very took many. those results to him. And he was like, I may need to reconsider my thinking about this. After five years of being told, you know, this is helping me. <laughs> but a lot of doctors. But that's have been the only way they have to see it doctors. to believe it. Exactly. But and they're reluctant. I understand it. They, there's not a lot of information like this in the standard mainstream literature for OBGYNs. Right. It's in endocrine. They don't read that. I never read it before I started doing this. Right. And then I found all this stuff in you the endocrine this in journal. I, I did. I need to know this. I, I did. It? I had yeah. to. I had to find out. I had to discover what what the right levels were. But the American, um, the AMMG, which is a group of forward thinking age management doctors, have decided on a, a range of normals. I've decided on something within that range. As a normal, I work with because it make it correlates with symptoms. So in in my world and in my Quest Lab and in my lab core, when I've got a total testosterone of less than four hundred, and a and a free testosterone of less than twenty nine one twenty nine, then I have men who have symptoms. Right, and, and I those need are to the do men something. That are eligible for treatment. Right, the other men you'll send away and say, "Not yet. Come back when you're." Or I won't shape. even see them. Yeah, but the, the but the men who have just let's play this out. An, a man who has normal testosterone, say it's 600, mm -hmm. okay? And he has a very low free testosterone, right. okay? Replacing him is going to take a ton of testosterone. I've got to shut down the 600 right. and then rebuild it to 1,200. Right. That's that's a lot of testosterone. And why am I doing that when I should be looking at how can I free up this so you look at other hormones? So I look at es estrogens. If men, his, men make estrogen. Men make estrogen. Mm -hmm. And we make more, men make more and more estrogen as they get older. So every year you're making more estrogen. Mm -hmm. That's one of the ways your your function goes down. So not only do you make less testosterone, but That's you make more estrogen. Domestic. You can ca It ca can cause breast, breast development, big, big bellies. bellies. Um, as we all suck in, yeah. uh, and and it, it can also cause con confusion and crying at movies and anxiety and all those things that you never I, had to I deal I was with. Just getting in touch with my feminine side. Yeah, else, yeah, right? we, we like that for about a minute. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so so when when I you know see somebody like that, I'll say to my front desk, tell him I want to see him, mm -hmm. but don't promise him pellets because. I don't think he needs them yet. Right. And so sometimes he comes in and says, I was already on testosterone. You know, I, then, then, right. If he was on testosterone, he shows me the numbers from so before, what do you do then if you I'll give treat him. Estrogen? him. You, you don't give him I don't the, give him estrogen. I take him. it away. Oh, they're making too much. They're making too much. So I use Arimidex and DIM. Arimidex is a drug mm -hmm. usually used to prevent breast cancer, to treat men's breast gynecomastia or breast. Um, it also decreases belly fat. It also improves free testosterone. Mm -hmm. So it really is a great medication. It's used off-label for this use. Okay. But we are getting rid of the estrogen, which causes sex hormone binding globulin to go up. Sex hormone binding globulin inactivates testosterone. But so does Sex hormone binding globulin is stimulated by many things. One is if you don't eat all day and you just eat one meal, that increases sex hormone binding globulin. Right. And it also is increased if you starve yourself like anorexia. Which is why you need to spend time talking to these people to find out what <laughs> their regular patterns of life are. There, there are so many pieces to this that when I train people to do what I do, 
I get overwhelmed with the number of things that I think about when I'm right. going over a chart. Right. Although my daughter reads my mind, so she was an easy deal to train Dr. Sullivan's doing great in Kansas City. So doing this. So certain people catch it, some don't. So I'm looking at estrogens. I'm looking at liver enzymes. If they have fatty liver, I have to treat that because if they have fatty liver, they're going to make a lot of estrone. Before you can break through to the testosterone. Before I can loosen up all of these, these yes. the testosterone. So I have to make sure that the estrone's low. I also make, have to make sure dihydrotestosterone isn't too high. If your dihydrotestosterone is too high, that comes from testosterone. It, I, I like to view it like a bucket. So you're putting testosterone in every day, filling your bucket up, but you have a leak in the bucket, and that leak is making dihydrotestosterone. Mm -hmm. So the more higher the dihydrotestosterone, the bigger the leak, the lower your testosterone. So it doesn't bind up your testosterone. You just you just lose your available amount of testosterone that the body can draw, that body can draw from, and therefore, and that percentage of free testosterone is still the same percentage, but it's a, of a smaller number. So you have a lower level of free testosterone. So I block that with a medication called finasteride, or I use saw palmetto if they want to go naturally. And then for these gentlemen, I'm not treating them with testosterone. I'm letting their bodies do its thing, and I'm trying to block all of these other bad things. It's kind of like in the old days when you had to... Uh, uh, Black and white television set with rabbit ears and a piece of aluminum foil stuck on the antenna. <laughs> I you remember have to that sadly. The antenna. Yeah, you do remember that. <laughs> yeah. I do too. But so, so you're adjusting that antenna to get the signal to come in strongly enough that it works, and that the symptoms actually go away. The one yeah. thing that I think that physicians don't have time to do nowadays, they look at a lab sheet and say you're fine, see ya. They don't say how are the symptoms I'm trying to treat. Right. Usually you come in with some visible or or a list of symptoms. Okay. And that's very important in terms of testosterone. We have to know what those are. If they're gone, you know what, then, then your testosterone level is perfect. So if you're not an oral learner and you listen to this and it's just kind of a flush of data, <laughs> if you're a visual learner... Or if, if I'm are, confusing you. <laughs> or if you, you need to think in a logical sequence, let us recommend to you our book, The Secret Female Hormone. Because in that book, Dr. Maupin and I explain all the stuff that we've just been talking about. You can go back and read it. You can check it out. You can refresh your memory. You also can take it to your physician and say, okay, here's what she's saying. And all the references are there if, they're, if they care to look or if they're uh, not immediately accepting of the data to say, well, I'm suspicious about this. It's all there for you to find and track your way through. We don't talk about men in that book. But so we talk men, about the process for decision-making. But we making. talk about the exact same process, but exactly. we don't talk about men, which is our next book. Okay. So I'll wait for that one to come out. <laughs> Thank you for listening today. Hope we helped. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. Find Brett Newcomb at brettnewcomb.com.